What is going on, Notre Dame fans? Mike Singer and Tim Hyde with this week's Notre Dame football show. Tim, I'm pretty sure we did a show last Wednesday, but it still feels like it was forever since we've done one of these. Am I wrong? Am I wrong here? I mean, we had Chris Zorich. That was a great show. We had the Zorich. Zorich. We had we had one Notre Dame legend. We're bringing on another Notre Dame legend here in just a couple minutes. And Mike Goolsby. Man, fired up for the show, Tim. How are you doing, my friend? Well, speaking of yeah, when are we going to get Mike and Zorich on together and just talk Chicago? High school football. That's what we need. Since Notre Dame is making a deeper push into Chicago, we need to get those two guys on talking about the glory days. Like Joey says, please, folks, hit the thumbs up on this video. And he dropped a super chat. He said, uh, to support my three favorite Notre Dame football analysts. Hey, Joey, uh, definitely appreciate that. Hopefully the stream um, is uh, is working just fine for everybody. Please let us know in the comments if anything is acting up. But uh yeah, I mean, we, we there's so much news to discuss um, here lately, and I know some of it, like, hey, the the Jared Parker thing that was what ten days ago or something like that's old or a couple weeks, ah, that's old news. But there's a lot more to kind of reflect on, so we're gonna uh, do just that um, in today's video. Um, and, and let's go ahead and, and bring on um, the main man, Mike Goolsby. Mr. Goolsby, how are you doing, sir? What's up, Michael? What's up, Tim? Hello. Man, have you been on a Wednesday show with us before? Our little Notre Dame football show? We bring you on. We update our graphics. Everything looks snazzy. I'm honored to be here. Thanks for last, having me. Yeah, last time Mike was on was, oh, it was Drew Pine. When we all got together on Pine and he was on, his, was our, he was on his phone driving. I, f- I felt like uh, that was the coolest show we've ever done. I had like six different people on. We just kept bringing in people. In. That was an awesome show. Okay. Um, yeah, biggest Notre Dame show we've done. One of them. Was was the Drew Pine news? Drew Pine, so there much, so much care about about Drew Pine, especially from Mike Goolsby. Well, yeah, sadly, yeah, sadly, conflict. It's conflict creates content. You know, put that on a T-shirt, but it's true. You know, add that to the list of the many T-shirt ideas that we have. Yeah, Mike I'm Goosby. writing it down. All right, folks, please do uh, hit that thumbs up um, on this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content. Um, get your get your comments, get your questions, drop super chats. We'll get to all of it. Uh, just kind of have a free. Th- Free flowing discussion tonight. Uh, we're going to start with the whole buyout thing because, yes, while it's a little bit of old news, Marcus Freeman had a press conference uh, on Monday and uh, I-, I tweeted out a little bit of an update from Marcus Freeman. His opening comments in his press conference it's gold. If you haven't seen it, definitely go watch it. It's on our YouTube page. Um, this is what he said at no time during the process. Did I not have the support of our administration? This is regarding the whole offensive coordinator situation going after Andy Ludwig and Pete Thamel's reports that the buyout was an issue. Uh, Freeman also said he's been willing to pay whatever buyout there's been. Swarbrick has never shied away from paying a buyout. So um, I actually want to go to Goolsby on this first do you think that this is the truth or do you think this is a guy covering for his boss? I can see it going either way. I would totally understand it going either way as well. Yeah, I think it's probably the latter. It's absolutely the latter. Um, I think what's, I mean, I don't want to, we're going to work our, work our, our circle here of communication, but the Swarbrick letter, I don't think we can overlook that either. Um, that was like borderline bizarre to me. But yeah, I think Coach Freeman at his presser, that's a little bit of CYA for his boss and Jack Swarbrick. Absolutely. Tim? I think, and I think there's probably degrees of truth, Mike. Yeah. Like, I mean, Somebody dropped the ball. There's a fumble here at some point to a degree, right? I mean, this didn't run smoothly. I think we all agree there. Where did the error come from? Who committed said error? Maybe we'll never know. But, yeah, I think Freeman, um, you know, he's, he's learning how to be a head coach, Tim, right? You got to stand You got to stand up and, and, and face the firing squad and say the right things. So here is some of that. If for folks watching on YouTube, you can read that email um that he sent out certainly interesting tim did you have any any thoughts on on this email specifically um i'm probably the absolute i i might be the only one i I should go on twitter and just start posting my thoughts it's like oh gosh i i think i'm the only one who thinks it's jack swarbrick laughing at everybody 
I do. I think he's like kind of mocking people like the opening and then the end to me, the ending is, I think it's pretty classic. I don't read. I mean, number one, he's a lawyer. So you never read what lawyers put out as word as the actual black and white. There's hidden meetings everywhere. There's some Hollywood lawyers. I know who have been a few of my team dads before <laughs> and they taught me how to write some stuff. And Tim, and, where he's asking for money is okay. just like he's mocking people like you guys don't think we have money then donate but i think it's a little dig at at the overreaction on monday night that people just went nuts i've seen people on twitter post their emails to father Jenkins and uh dr jack and it's just like man you guys went crazy it's like whatever it is, there is there there i mean it's passive aggressive though tim we agree there oh yeah oh yeah yeah i mean he's he's, he's being aggressive number one they're I was stunned he did it. Why? It's like you didn't need to do that. It's like who gives it? Who gives a damn what the heck people are posting on Twitter and shouting from the rooftops on YouTube? Who cares? But the fact that he did that was less. I think it's the opposite of what people think. I think it's a dig. I think he's kind of mocking some people out there. Is my take. Tim, where do you stand on the Freeman's comments in terms well, of? PR yeah. versus just the truth. But yeah, I typically as, as the great loose mojo, I would, I would always say it, the truth some, lies somewhere in the middle. Sure. You know what? The You know, the whole buyout thing, people are acting like, oh, no, you know, people are like, oh, here's the buyout. And you write a check in 15 minutes. It's like, so I just went, you know, this thing called Google. You go on Google and you start looking up things. So who are the hot, hot names the last couple of years? Marcus Freeman, right? Going to either LSU or Notre Dame. Okay. Marcus Freeman's buyout, $60,000. Jim Knowles, Jim Knowles, the best DC in the country from Oklahoma State going to Ohio State. You know what how much his buyout was? $65,000. Garrett Riley right now, Garrett Riley, same thing, dirt cheap to go from, what, TCU to Clemson. And speaking of Garrett Riley, if Garrett Riley goes to the NFL for any job or takes a college job, his buyout is zero. So I wouldn't be surprised if Notre Dame, and that's the other thing uh, on this uh, Ludwig thing is he has a lifetime contract. That's his three-year rolling cycle. And I, I guess you posted, Mike, right? The rolling cycle just kicked in on February 1st, I believe. That's when it jumped from like $40,000 to $2.8 million or whatever it was, his buyout. And Notre, I bet you Notre Dame was like, are you kidding me? $3 million buyout for an assistant football coach? On top of that, yeah, I got What's that? I got to say something. Yeah, so go for it. Interject, building off of what you're saying. So look at it through the lens of these disgruntled Notre Dame fans, right, Tim? Yeah. So like, oh, we're not willing to pay 2.8 versus $60,000. Like did that 2.8 number, are you saying that they jacked that 2.8 number because Notre Dame was in the mix? No, no, no. That's how the contract. Well, are, you saying, are you saying that for an assistant coach, two point eight is astronomical? It's ridiculous. Okay, that's it's what you're saying. You know, and then you're like, well, Alabama would have paid it. Find me. I, I posted this to some people. It's like, find me one coach Alabama has paid three million dollars to go get. Find me one. Find me one. Kirby Smart did. Kirby Smart just walked down the hallway and got his analyst to be his OC. So, so do we know? Do we know why that figure might have went from sixty k to? It, 2.8. How I've read it on the Utah message boards and Pete Sampson of the athletic has written about this, where it's a, he's basically got a lifetime contract, meaning, you know, he's going to stay there for life and it rolls over every three years and the new contract kicked in and this, and this uh, amount just shot skyrocketed up because who's, who's going out there going to, you know, go pay for that and stuff like that. And it also, I look at it another way is he's, he signed the contract knowing that the guy's the guy's born and bred in Utah. He's never planning on leaving. He went to Notre Dame, got excited. This is my quick little take on it. Got excited, goes home on Super Bowl. Whittingham's with his son, what coaches on one of the teams. Hey, we'll meet Monday. But you know darn well they've been talking. So as he's sitting at home, he's got family, Swarbrook, and all the guys are looking like $3 million. And he wants to bring the old line coach. We're looking at $4 million buyout. The old line. The old line coach's buyout is more than the guy makes as well. It's crazy. So, Tim, so I'm playing about to play devil's advocate, Tim. Sure. Well, you're saying that the two point, you guys like American Pickers, the show on History Channel. You guys ever watched that show? I know what you're talking about. Okay. 
so sometimes they'll watch it and they'll, you'll watch the show and then Mike will be like, uh, what's your, I don't want to sell it price. So yeah. like, they'll just throw out some stupid number. Like, okay, if you're going to, so you're kind of saying that that 2.8, if it jumped from 60 K hypothetically to 2.8, that's the, I don't want to sell it price. Right. Yeah. But then we're also saying that it's such what you're saying, Tim, it's such a absurd number. Is this right? <laughs> so that maybe we weren't willing to pay it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I, w- I wouldn't be surprised if they all they all sat there, scratched their head, and like we're dishing out millions of dollars for an assistant football coach. No one else is doing this. So it'd be and bad that, business. It's bad business. If you add in someone, I I saw someone uh, wrote this on Twitter, which I thought was pretty pretty interesting. Was you know talking about the buyouts and if you know the O line coach was going to come because he stay on leaves. All the money you dish out for these two football coaches was going to be double Freeman's salary for for at least a year. Consider the buyouts and all that stuff. So it's like, how does that look? You know, no one no one wants to talk about that. Whether that's right or wrong, and Freeman's building his program and he wants these guys, but these two guys are making combined more money than Freeman. I thought that was kind of odd. And may, did Notre Dame think of that? And the whole oh they weren't going to pay it. There's never been anyone who ever said Notre Dame was never going to pay it. They said it was an obstacle. And if Pete Thamel doesn't use that word obstacle and Freeman, who, by the way, I did not like his answer on the hockey game is ridiculous. If they don't go to that really? stupid, they don't go to this stupid hockey game. None of this is an uproar. That hockey game blew everything out of proportion. Yeah, because you're, you're, you're saying it blew it out of proportion because of my point. Like that was their way of saying this is our guy. You, you, that's what you're kind of getting at. Yes, one thousand. Yes, total agreement with you, Singer. Because going to that, it's not a recruit. You take recruits, you're walking them around. You don't take coaches to a damn hockey game to hey, this is Notre Dame. No, Notre Dame is the football office where we lift, where we meet, where we practice. You know, if you want to go to a hockey game with your family in February, go for it. Taking him out in public, I didn't. Freeman's answer, you know, to one of the questions was just like, "Well, we take our top recruits there." Yeah, it. This is not recruiting. This is a trying to get a ball coach. Taking them out in public, man. Yeah, if you don't get them, look at the uproar that just happened, Coach Freeman. Tim, isn't it usually like when you bring the coach on campus for an interview? That's kind of like the final thing. Like, eh, it's basically already a verbal. Yeah. Kind of deal. Like when Reese went down for his, he was already a done deal. I even put yeah. that on our message board. Yeah. I was like, it's yeah. really just crossing the I's, crossing the T's and dotting the I's. Um, but yeah, not it's, for Notre Dame in this one. Well, they do this, you know, he did Zoom. So we talked to all these guys for hours, met him, did their background. He watched film as he talked about in his press conference. You know, he wants to keep the offense the same. He wants to run the ball. He's got tight ends, play action, tack vertical. You know, vertical, you know, deep, go deeper. You know, when you get a quarterback who could throw more than 40 yards, as, as we've done mathematically with Pine Singer. So we've done, that. <laughs> we've done that exercise. So once you get a quarterback who could throw, you know, 40 and a half yards. So he wants, you know, he wants to keep it the same. That's what he wants to do. So, and he went out and found Klein at Kansas State, spit an image, they're going to run the ball down your throat, play action, do some quarterback keepers in Utah. You watch Utah and Notre Dame, find me three differences. I mean, they do so much stuff similar. If anything, Utah's more heavy on tight end packages than Notre Dame, which would blow people's mind away when you really sit there and you start to break down Utah. So very, very similar in how Utah and Notre Dame does a lot of their stuff. They just have a better quarterback and rising than Pine, and that's how you know they executed this year. Goolsby, you have any other thoughts on this? I just think the whole thing, I think it's a fun exercise to go back to when Brian Kelly left. Because yeah. so much has happened yeah. in what 12, 16, 18 months. I mean, it's been, it's been uh it, for lack of a better word, it's been interesting. And I think that I think you you see the guys that Freeman's bringing in here with Parker and the, our new quarterback coach Gino, like he's bringing in his guys. My question is, Tim. Is he leaning on like these, these are the guys he wants in the foxhole, right? The proverbial foxhole analogy, or is it these other young coaches? Cause it does matter. And you know, this Tim, what, whose wagon are you going to hit your coaching star to? Right. So in my experience, right. Like if you were affiliated with urban Meyer during his rise, like you got a head coaching gig, you're a Dan Mullen, right? Yeah. If you hitched your wagon to Ty Willingham, 
you're coaching in the CFL. CFL. (laughs) The guys on the street. So some of these young coaches around the country, you know, these sexy names, those guys are watching. Let me, let me, let me let this Marcus Freeman experiment. Let me watch this play out for another year before I jump on that ship. So is it Freeman's going with his foxhole guys? Because these these young coaches got families. I mean, this is their career. Yeah. Is it them being a little bit hesitant? You know, what is this going to turn into? And that's where I'm. I mean, I'm optimistic. As long as we can recruit, I'm optimistic. That's all I give a shit about, truly. Um, but it's been a little messy, and I don't think, um, I don't think you can say anything else. It's I mean, it's been a little bit messy. Well, going back, to Singer, to uh, Freeman's press conference was, you know, he did talk about a national search. Yeah, he went to Utah, Kansas State. You know, it's, I'm sure he did, you know, another 10 Zoom interviews, a dozen. I'm sure he reached out to a lot of people. There's talk, you know, obviously Byron Lefrich is an NFL guy, personally called Freeman to, to talk to the with the job. The comments about the Mac coaches, which was always puzzling, you know, a Mac coach leaving a head coaching job to be an OC. That, I think, goes to Goolsby's point, which goes back to Andy Ludwig. He's sitting there. It's Notre Dame. Yes, it's Notre Dame. He's almost 60 years old. He's not He's not looking to be the Utah head coach or whatnot. So he's looking at it. He's excited. Goes home. Hangs out with the family. And it's like they're going for a three-peat Rose Bowl at Utah. Or do I do what Goolsby just said? Do I jump on this Freeman thing? Do I jump on this Notre Dame thing? We just lost four games. What's going to happen here? You know, they got a rental quarterback for one year. What the heck's happening in 2024? Who, who's to say an, an offensive coordinator of nearly 30 years doesn't sit back and start putting all these things on the whiteboard and looking at the pros and cons? And, you know, and, no, you know, and, the, and the, uh, the information came out where swore, Notre Dame kept talking to Utah all the way through Tuesday. Ludwig finally said on Tuesday where it came out with um, Heather Dinich of ESPN, where she just said, I'm done. I'm done. I'm, I'm going to stay. So it's not like Notre Dame never stopped. I think I, I really, truly believe a lot of this was Andy Ludwig just sitting back going to Goolsby saying, like, I'm going to hang out with Kyle Whittingham, a guy I, I know I've known my Who's life. a hell of a coach. Damn good ball coach. Hell of a coach. Yes. And then there's yeah. the he stand. Then there's the he stand element. Yes. Which is, you know, like he comes out of retirement to come back for a year. Reese leaves. Ludwig seems like he's in the bag. He's going to bring his O line coach. Harry Peace is out. Like, it's just bad, man. It's like, it's kind of like I said, it's messy. Now you got this young staff. You've got a young staff over there. Whispers about Golden leaving. It's been, I mean, consistency, Tim, is the truest measure of performance, right? So it's like Freeman has got to find. Just some consistency. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, I'm just about to lose my mind on the YouTube chat. Guys, like you can't I, – I don't want anyone saying that they know anything definitively on this because you don't know. Like none of you know. You know, you know uh, uh, jumping on the Harry thing, and that's that's an interesting thing, you know, because obviously Harry's in retirement. That's You know, he's, he's been retired for two years. He's hanging out, you know, chilling in South Bend, coaching guys in the garage, as we've learned. But, you know, he's involved. He, he loves Tommy. He coached with Tommy. Went to a national championship game, even though he's a backup. But Tommy was on the team. He's the you know the you know, team you know leader in thirteen and all that stuff. So he's always kept close ties to Tommy. Tommy goes to him, says, "Hey, I'm staying. I'm not going with Kelly. Come out of retirement." He stands, says yes. But at the same time, the fact that like, as soon as Tommy left, no one really talked about Harry as if well Harry stand. Harry's like, it sounds like he went to Freeman the same day and just said, "I'm here for Tommy. Tommy's gone. I'm gone." So how much, you know, how much, you know, money did Harry Heastan put into Notre Dame, really? He, he knew he was on borrowed time, correct? It sounds like he was on borrowed time until Tommy left, whether that's now or next December. So, you know, that's, yeah. in, you know, so he got as much as he can out of the old line and now he's got to go find a new one. Yeah. If you thought Harry Heastan was going to be around for a decade, I don't know no. what you were thinking. No. Um, yeah, but the one, the one year stop is... The one year, yeah, I mean, I would have thought it's me a And then I yes. think, you know, for just all this stuff is optics, right? Again, our boy Colin talks about this often, like the optics of things, right? The, the, the timing at which you hired Parker, I like the hire. And I think people, people forget, Parker's career was going like this, and then he got into a little bit of trouble. 
if anybody's looked this up, like he got into a little bit of trouble and then he kind of, his coaching career kind of took a couple steps back and then he got back. He's cause he's a great coach. He got right back on the, you know, the path to success. Um, but the, the, the turnaround to hire Parker, it felt like, like almost needy in, in a, in a way um, to, to me. It's like, I almost wish they would have just given it a couple more days it just wouldn't have come across as such a knee jerk, almost. Uh, yeah. When I don't desperate's too strong of a word, but just the, the turnaround, hurry up, like the Ludwig crap happened. It's like okay, no, Parker's our Parker's our OC. It's like well, that was a little quick, you know. To me, that was my take on the hire. Yeah, it sounds like he interviewed that Tuesday, where Notre Dame was still talking to Ludwig. You know, coach said, "No, I'm staying at Utah," and he interviewed Parker that same day. So. That's when he just moved on that quick. And um, yeah, you're right. It was, you know, so it goes back to the national search, you know, was Parker after he talked to these dozen coaches and, you know, you guys in the NFL, head coaches, other OCs, it sounds like Parker was third on his list. He went straight to him, but that's going back to you, Goolsby, as we've chatted this last week as well, is just, you know, just being comfortable, just being comfortable at the end and, and choosing him to be his OC instead of going outside the box for that big position, which he did try. I mean, he went after Colin Klein, who's only been an OC for one year. I found that fascinating that he thought he could, you know, that he was the guy right away. That's well, the I would have liked that hire personally. No, I, I, I that found that a head scratcher. A guy who'd been an OC for one year and lived his whole life in Manhattan, Kansas. I thought that was interesting. And yeah, it seems like a losing proposition, like where, you know, Colin Klein, Kansas State, they kind of caught lightning in a bottle, Tim, for one yeah. year. And then you go chase that. I don't know if that's like a winning proposition. I don't know if that's, again, smart business. You feel me on that? Like if he oh, can yeah. replicate that, sure. Um, but I wouldn't have liked that higher. But I think with Parker, you know, the upside, he knows the person. I mean, we liked uh, – Tim, I think we like Tommy as a play caller. I think we like Tommy as a play caller a lot. You as a coach, there's – you know, if coaching is a pie chart, I mean, play calling is – a slice of that pie yep. chart, right? Development, recruiting. Um, that was my knock on Tommy was like, obviously the recruiting and development of a quarterback. And then also like looking at the pieces that he had on the team, on the roster and what is their best fit. And it just seemed like it took a half a season before he figured out, oh, this guy's better used, better served to play inside versus outside, this type of run versus that type of run. I think going into 2023, with Coach Parker, you can skip all of that you know, kind of feeling out period because hopefully he has a much better idea of the personnel and what they're best suited for. Tim, when you look at just Parker, the coach, and his you know career here, like let's put the whole Ludwig drama behind us. But like when you just look at his credentials, what do, what do you kind of think about his experience here? He's got a lot of, I mean, he's got a lot. He's coached at a, de- a lot of different places. You know, I, you know, his interview was, his interview was excellent. Listening to him talk and he talked about what Randy Sanders, Randy Sanders is big time, you know, Southern SEC assistant coach, long time Phil Fulmer, Kentucky, you know, Randy Sanders has been around everywhere. He mentioned him by name, how he was kind of his, uh, you know, father figure get, get going in coaching, which I thought, I thought that was awesome because I've heard coach Sanders speak at a clinic before. Great football coach. The one thing, you know, it's kind of getting overlooked is the interim coach. And the, and with the interim, I'm not worried about record. I, you know, if you take over as an interim coach, it's a train wreck. You yeah. fire a guy in the middle of the season. I, you know, it's a mess. I like the fact that he was chosen. So if you're chosen to be an interim coach by the administration, they believe that you could control a room, basically, correct? You could manage these guys. You could communicate with these guys. So that, that right there shows me, you know, he's got some great communication skills. He knows how to work with people, knows how to be a leader. That's, I mean, it's going back to not that he's Dabo Sweeney, but Dabo was that, correct? He was, hey, he's just a wide receiver coach. He's like, you guys want me to be the interim coach at Clemson? All right, what the heck? And uh, But Dabo has, obviously, we've seen the history uh, with him. He's a, a communicator. So I kind of like that little realm and – He's been with David Cutcliffe, who's a heck of a football coach. He's got experience with him. The year at Penn State, they went and won the Cotton Bowl. 
you know, you watch that offense. It's unbelievable. They lost two barn burners, Ohio State and Minnesota that year. That offense was explosive in 2019. And then uh, real, um, on, a, on Parker talking about the, the red zone stuff and all this West Virginia stuff, no one knows what the heck he did. And I found that was pretty honest what he said. Like, he be, read between the line, he says West Virginia was a mess. Train wreck, yeah. It was a train wreck. It's a mess. Head coach doesn't know what the hell he's doing. He gave me a couple assignments. I did them. And he did. And when you look at his numbers, it sounds like he was in charge of red zone and it improved every single year. So his one little his one little thing. But it just sounded like everyone had a hand in the offense and it was a mess at West Virginia. So can't judge him by that. He's not the head football coach. He definitely sounds like a good soldier. You tell me what to do, I'm going to go do it. And that's what I got from listening to him. All right, we're going to go a little rapid fire through some super chats. Um, just one ND gal. Appreciate the 10 here. Um, uh, comments says, pray that Ryan Day keeps the Ohio State in the playoffs in the Final Four and definitely because if he fails, guess who will get the head coach call? I think that kind of depends on how Notre Dame does under yes. Marcus Freeman. But uh, Goolsby, do you have any thoughts on this real quick? I agree with exactly what you just said, Mike. That would have been my response word for word. Pat myself on the back. Tim, any thoughts? Yeah, people always say Freeman's leaving. 30 Ohio seconds, State. Tim, not a, not a, not a 10, mean, 30 seconds. Hey, all three. these people are saying Freeman's going to Ohio State. He ain't going to Ohio State unless you win. Just because he's a Buckeye and he's a team captain doesn't mean he's automatically going there. you got to win football games. And Ohio State, we'll see what he does at Notre Dame. Really appreciate the super chat. King Lou says, uh, you guys haven't spoken about Tyson Ford in a while. He didn't play last year. What's going on with him? I mean, we – I don't know. Unless it's a quarterback, we usually don't talk about players who – uh aren't playing. I mean, uh, Tyson Ford is a good player. I, I mean, we'll, we'll see if he breaks into the defensive line rotation this year. Appreciate the super chat. Um, yeah, I don't think I, I, I can, I can add something there, yeah, Mike. Please do. If we were calling high school, he was kind of a big end. Is that right? Yes. So now he's kicked inside to a three technique. I presume. I'd say three or five jury still might be out. Well, he's a three technique from what I remember watching his films. I remember my comp for him was like, and again, I do these fun comps. Yeah. Was uh Chris Jones from Kansas City, just in terms of like the the size that he's gonna grow into, the length, the movement, and all that. So, yeah, Tim, you could probably touch on that, but that's a big adjustment from like a high school stud defensive end. Now you're going into getting double teams and all that. Yeah. Um, like for a kid like a Tyson Ford. You could put him in some sort of third down jet package, you know, two wide, three techniques, and just let him go play. Um, Tyson Tyson Ford can kind of be a microcosm for like Freeman's tenure, fellas. Like, dude, like young kids have to play. Like, you know, if if if, if this if twenty twenty three is such a big year, Tim, it's like we got to play kids, young kids, kids that have some of free uh, Freeman's kind of fingerprints on them. I'm not going to leave my, you know, head coaching career at Notre Dame in the hands of guys that somebody else have that somebody else recruited and that they have hit their ceiling. You know, I think it's an easier narrative for 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 Freeman to sell that like we're playing young guys. You know, the, the potential is still there. We're getting incrementally better. Uh, but Tyson Ford, yes, to the super chat is another one of those young kids that he's got to develop a role. Um, and if he's not a full time starter, create a little bit of a niche role for him. Okay, a uh, couple super chats kind of about Matt Luke. This news uh, came out from Football Scoop before we started recording. Um, Hank says, uh, if Jared Parker offense can score points, develop, and recruit, who cares? That's the dream. Uh, more interested in Matt Luke as a possible O-line replacement from Georgia Thoughts. JP says, go get Matt Luke for offensive line and stops the cheap Notre Dame talk. Uh, JP and Hank really appreciate these super chats. So, um, yeah, really interesting ball coach. I mean – uh, you got Jared Parker, who has that thick country accent. Um, yeah, you're, you're, you'd be getting another guy from the south here. So uh, Matt Luke, yeah, played at Ole Miss, was the uh, co-OC and O-line coach for, at Ole Miss from 2012 to 16, um, a period where Ole Miss was doing all sorts of sketchy stuff. So if you want Notre Dame to buy players, maybe this is your I'm, – I'm totally kidding. Bad joke. Um, and then head coach at Ole Miss from 17 to 19, and then – uh, was at Georgia from 2019 to 2021 and uh, stepped away in 2022 from coaching, spent more time with his family. And uh, as we know with that kind of thing, when someone wants to step away from the family, they spend a lot of time with their family and then decide, you know what, I want to get back into coaching. So here he is, um, you know, report that he is very high 
uh, on Notre Dame's wish list for this position. What would you think about him, Tim, if Notre Dame's to go this route? I uh, first off, I'd be shocked because he's a he's a deep South guy. He hasn't you know he hasn't crossed those uh, that Mason Dixon. He hasn't gotten up there yet. He's a deep South guy. Great football coach. He really is a good football coach. He's once again, you look at guys he's been around. Tom, played for Tommy Tumberville, you know. Obviously, then, um, oh my God, David Cutcliffe, you know, he learned under him. Worked with Philip Fulmer, who before Philip Fulmer was the great football coach at Tennessee, he was a long time, long time uh, offensive line coach for Tennessee. So obviously, he learned how to coach O line from there. And going back to this interim thing, he became the interim coach after they fired Hugh Freeze and all that fiasco with coach freeze, they pick Matt Luke because he could command a room. He could command a team. He goes out. I think they went six and six his first year. Couldn't go to a bowl. Stays there three years. Got fired. I think it was the wide receiver incident. Correct. I was just reading about some stuff the other day when I started looking at little lines. Remember the wide receiver in the egg bowl that faked peeing on the, peeing oh, on the hydrant. Yeah. yeah. I think he got let go after that. You know, goes to Georgia, you know, Kirby Smart hires them, does a great job, wins the national championship. Their old lines will just maul the heck out of you with those big guys. But um, took a year off is burnout. There's some articles out there on the internet that are awesome to read about him. He's a deep family guy. ESPN followed him for an entire season, his first year in 17. It's called The Season. You can watch it on SEC Network. It's on all the time. I've seen a handful. I He's been on my, you know, go-to list the last couple of days just watching old line guys trying to see who they're going to pick so he would definitely be up there in the top three when it comes to elite elite guys and he could get cools be any thoughts i think southern recruiting yes that's, that's he's, got, he's got ties that's he's got ties oh, no man. high school coaches down there he's been down yes. there um i don't know tim and this is again another thing another instance yet another instance where we need lou back but I don't know, Tim. Is there a is there a precedent at a Notre Dame? I mean, sure, we pulled pl- plenty of players out of the South, but a coach that you know, I mean, Mississippi is Mississippi to come up to like you know, midwestern cold academia of of Notre Dame. I don't know if there is a precedent, but when I hear a name like that and you look at a resume like that, yeah, I just think of big Southern recruits. That's what I think. <laughs> well, that's funny you say that because, you know, I sort of, you know, because it's been so quiet on the front. Nothing's going out there. So you just start, you know, you see the mock list and you just start going down and you got obviously the Minnesota coach. Well, you know, he's coached in the Midwest his entire life. You got, you know, Joe Rudolph, the Wisconsin coach. I love him because he, he played for Barry Alvarez. Coach, you know, he learned from Barry Alvarez and then he's Paul Chris and then he's at Vautech now, but he's a Midwestern guy. And then with Matt Luke, someone had posted about him. Uh, I found that in this is a couple of days ago. I started doing research on him, and it's like, man, is he really going to leave retirement? He's sitting. There, he's got ten million dollars in his bank. He even mentioned it. I got you know with all these buyouts, he got ten million dollars. What the heck do I need to coach for? You know, he's, he's got plenty to live the rest of his life. So if he if if Freeman gets him out of retirement, man, that is a recruiting win because uh, he's going to go south. Tim, is it a, is Those it fair to find large dudes? Is it fair to assume he's a man of faith? Oh God, yeah. I mean, you just okay. So that's if I'm you know I'm putting my salesman hat on. I'm trying to find some commonality with Coach down there. And I'll say this, just in terms of like Southern football versus what Notre Dame is. Yeah. You know, I was at the Clemson game this past year, and sitting next to a a Clemson. Yeah, and I for, if they're watching, I forget their names at this point. But husband and wife, husband was a diehard Notre Dame fan, but they were both from the South. Wife went to South Carolina. This is both of their first time coming to Notre Dame, being on campus. And these are like SEC football fans, and they were blown away. Blown away. So we tend to think like, oh, everything's better down South in terms of college football. But they were like blown away at the fan base, Notre Dame the mystique, all of that. So that's, I'd say uh, this is me saying, you're telling me there's a chance. Well, that, well, that's it's, it's funny you say that because, you know, Kirby Smart talked about that when they came up in 17 and all the Georgia fans that were just like raving about South Bend. They're like, how have mm-hmm. we never been up here in our entire history of our program? And they, I mean, so many articles down South on the 
blogs and the internet talking about their fans. Like, my God, going to South Bend was like, we, we got to do this once a decade. So you're right, Mike. When, pe- when teams travel up there, they have a great time. They enjoy it. It's Notre Dame. It, it's still, no matter what people say, they're irrelevant. They don't care. Who cares? You haven't won a title in, you know, 100 years, all that stuff. It's still Notre Dame. Yeah, and I think it'd be fun to just peel peel coach apart in terms of like where did that burnout come from? Yeah, you know, what was the Pretty genesis of that, that burnout and how Notre Dame Notre Dame environment is different than an SEC football environment. But anyways, we'll see what happens. That, that, no, that, that's a great point because he mentions in one of the articles, uh, you know, when he retired for a year that it was just recruiting. He was like, my God, he's all same thing in the south. He's all in the south. You have to recruit every single second. And he says it's wild. All right, we're gonna read some uh, some more ch- super chats, but uh, first we are going to hear from our sponsors over at Rogue Shop. First, Kevin says Goolsby so good at this. I agree. I agree, Kevin. He's the best. Well, f- listen, folks. The Rogue Shop is a husband and wife outfit, as Mister Rogue and his wife Shar are craft cannabis farmers who specialize in small batch sustainable plant medicine, a true holistic type of small business they farm and grow everything themselves and do everything by hand their website to visit as you can see on the screen for our youtube audience it's rogueshop.com they sell ca excuse me cbd thc edibles tinctures smokables bath salts pain creams topicals vapes candles soaps and so much more their website even has a 24 7 chat feature where you can talk to the owners of the store yourself please do Check out Rogue Shop, excuse me, RogueShop.com if you have issues sleeping, or you have chronic pain, anxiety, stress, and you can use promo code Blue and Gold to get 10% off your order. That is promo code Blue and Gold, Indiana's place for legal CBD, THC, and more, a nationwide store. All right, we're going to bring the boys um, back in here. Can um, I just jump in? I'm just reading some guys talking about. You know, well, this is what Freeman wants and recruiting every day. You got to do that at Notre Dame. The South is different because in the South, Mike, Mike, you know, you're in Atlanta. You could drive anywhere in a couple hours. If you're going to go to South Bend, Indiana, if you're going to go to Notre Dame, you have to plan it. So you have to plan it. You got to pick a date. You got to get the, are you flying? Are you driving? When you're recruiting, this is what Matt Luke talks about in the article. It's like they had tickets to a game and it's like, oh, man, we got to get these guys to make sure they don't go to Clemson make sure they don't go to South Carolina, make sure they don't go to Alabama because all these guys are recruiting are all within a four hour drive. So it is different in the South compared to Notre Dame. All right, let's go back to those super chats um, that we have. Rick says last year was the hangover spoof. What do you think this year's will be the replacements? I don't know. That'll be fun. Notre Dame always does a good job with these videos. Appreciate the super chat, Rick. Is there a real- are they doing a Shamrock game, or is that just the Ireland thing? Is that the Shamrock series, the, the Ireland game? Yeah, or is it just a pause this year? Jeez, Louise, I don't even know. Let's just get to Ohio State. That's all I care about. <laughs> Hank says, Goolsby brought up Golden. Is there enough of a sample size to accurately assess his play-calling abilities? Marcus Freeman shopping for a new defensive coordinator next year. Goolsby, any thoughts? If we went, remember Mike, we went, I think it was at the tail end of the season. We went real quick. I kind of spun through some national statistics, yards per game, turnovers, et cetera. Like turnovers were dead last or second to last. You know, I, I would think that for a Notre Dame, and you know, the, the talent that we have, we were pretty middle of the road to me. So no, I wasn't blown away. Um, I wasn't blown away by, the, the defense that Al Golden rolled out. And I think that some of that, Tim, let's not get too off the rails here. This has oh. the potential to take us oh God. way off the rails. <laughs> um, but I do think that with Coach – and this – I'm already doing it. Oh, God. I'm not even one sentence in. So I think that Co- Coach Golden got here, you know, he just – he's in the Super Bowl. He gets to Notre Dame. Everything's a scramble. Everything with Freeman was kind of a scramble, Right. So it's like, okay, who do I have? So like some of the players, like the DJ Browns, the Maris Lee files of the world, he was like, okay, we're just going to roll with them. So he's trying to like install his defense. Meanwhile, like he's just going with what he's got. So I don't know if he's like having an, a fair chance to evaluate the, the talent of guys while he's trying to install a scheme. Does that make sense? Or like 
find a perfect fit for some kid within said scheme. So I, I think that the, the defense ought to be better this season because he has a, he has a full season of film to see what are these kids good at or what are they not so good at. Um, but like some of this man, like even on offense, like you got to start seeing Freeman's DNA here. Like, you know, Freeman's Cincinnati background, a lot of man coverage, a lot of turnovers, a lot of chaos. And we just didn't see it last year. Um, if you, if you lost coach golden, I, I don't think it'd be a huge loss personally. I don't, um, but we'll see what, we'll see what happens. Yeah. I mean, with defense, first off, you got the first time, you know, the first uh, year they've had the same linebacker coach in a few years, right. You go obviously Lee, then you go Freeman and now you got golden finally there for two years. So, yeah, we'll, see, so. we'll see if that makes a difference. No, but I mean, your point is great where, yeah, he's right. He's just, the guy just finished coaching the Super Bowl, and then all of a sudden he's in South Bend a week later. So it is a little, you know, wild. He's just coaching the guys. Freeman was the DC. Hey, here's the stuff we did. These are where the guys played, all that good stuff. So so if he takes, like, again, the whipping boy, Maris Leofile, if he inherits Maris Leofile, he goes through all spring trying to install, 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 install. We get into week three, week four, week five. He's like, shit, he can't play. But I've got all this hay in the barn install, Tim. I've got all this hay in the barn with these kids and it's hard to switch gears, you know, four or five, six games into the season. And on, over time, you did see some less rotation at spots, but to me, it comes down to the players. It's always going to come down to the players. Um, yeah. And we just, we've got to shore up the run and get some big bodies, Tim. No, you're right. I mean, look at some of the games, I mean, some of the the big games they gave up two hundred yards rushing. It's and that's it. We we just know this. I mean, like pl- stopping the run, Tim, oh. is so simple. It's to give up these chunk plays over and over, drive extending chunk plays. It's unacceptable. It's un. It's frankly, it's just unacceptable. All right, a couple more super chats. Gene dropped a five. Really appreciated, Gene. He also just said. Uh, Singer is the best host and moderator in the world. Notre Dame football. I mean, I'm not going to agree with the guy. He's also the most handsome. Cheers to uh, Singer. Most handsome guy named Mike Singer on the beat. Uh, that's, Mike, that's your wife in the other room. Get real. <laughs> yeah, I was also yelling at the guy earlier. So, yeah, and oh, I yeah. usually yell at her. So, there you go. Uh, in all seriousness, uh, Lou Holtz, Thunder and Bolts says, um, who offense and defense needs to have a breakout year next year for Notre Dame to take it to the next level? And a parenthesis have a legit chance at making a run. Tim, I'll give you a uh, a true 30 here. Tim, are you going O or are you going D or are you going both? Um, I'm not gonna no no wide receiver because that's too easy. On offense, you know what? How about something pretty easy? How about Mitchell Evans? Now that he's the guy, you know, Notre Dame, every since your buddy Anthony Fasano, ever since Fasano. Every tight end that has started has been the main starter has been drafted. Mitchell Evans, your time's up. Replace Michael Mayer. Enjoy that. I, you know, well, I'm just thinking off the uh, wide receiver. We can mention 15 wide receivers, yeah. you know, running backs. We know he's coming back. Offensive guard, flip a coin. I'm going to go with Mitchell Evans. I like that pick. Cool. Defense. Uh, defense who needs to step up on D. Jeez Louise, Riley Mills. Okay. I'm going, go, I'm going to go a little Illinois uh, high school football for you, Goolsby. How's that? It's interesting. And I you know, I actually sat with Riley when yeah. they brought some former players back to the spring. So I've texted him a handful of times. And I'm going to continue to do so. Because, like, I can see stuff in his game that it's, like, even physical stuff. You know, like, if he could get – loosen up his hips a little bit more, he's still kind of a little bit of a stiff athlete to me. I mean, physically looks the part. But I, I like that Riley Mills one. Um I'm oh, this is like a little bit of an obscure thing, but I'm going with Estime. You know, I kind of want to take a step back. Uh, Diggs is Reese's boy, right? So I believe that to be the case. Reese preferred Diggs over Estime. Um, I would like to see Estime become a household name in 2023 on offense. It's like a true breakout, like a household name type thing, a star. I think he has that, that, that makeup. And on, on D 
I'm going with a combo and it's it's Jalen Sneed, Prince Kali. Like they're just a kind of a package deal for me. Like one of those two kids has got to pop and play them. But then they're going to pop. If you play them, they'll pop. Put that on a T-shirt. But those two to me, <laughs> put those two to me are a combo. Like it has to happen. You can't bring a five-star kid in here and and let him collect us for two years. It can't, if, if we're trying to build what Freeman's trying to build, you can't do stuff like that. So – let me just jump on the linebacker thing, Mike. How do you how do you do that when it's obviously Marcus Freeman's going into the season? He went he went out and got a, a quarterback for a couple months. He's obviously selling everything out for 2023. How do you do that when you're all your linebackers are returning? Let's just say they're returning, whether they're bad, good, whatever. You got three fifth year experienced football players that play a lot of football at Notre Dame. How do you? Who do, who do you see? So, so, so this is something I was thinking. Great question, Tim. Great question. Look at us feeding off of one another, huh? Yes. Great question. So I was thinking about this the other night. And in some form or fashion, I was actually, Tim, to answer your question, I was thinking about this as it pertains to DJ Brown. Yeah. Like, you've been here, DJ. Like, we know what you are, right? So you're going to go into spring – as second string part of your responsibility on this team as a leader as a whatever fifth year guy is to develop kids like i can't afford to give you these reps dj because you know the defense and we know what you are we love you but now for the sake of the team i've got to bring these you've got to help me bring these other guys up as a coach does that make sense my yeah. um, like what does i'm that saying happen here? like does that happen in college though well yeah i think i think it absolutely does okay. it absolutely does and you know, like I've been a fifth year captain. So like, if you see a young, like Zippy talked about it, dude, you well, know, yeah, like, more, it's your job to help develop young kids. You're a fifth year captain. They're taking some of your reps away, but they're not my reps. That, I mean, that's, that's the whole point. And, and a kid like DJ knows. Okay. Uh, or, or ought to know. It's like, Hey man, you're kind of maxed out. We love you as a player. You're reliable. Part of your responsibility. Now, DJ Marist, Kaiser, Bertrand is to help develop, period. And and that I'm going to be like assessing, I'm going to factor that into my assessment of you as a player. And then the other point, Tim, I've never shared this story. So Courtney Watson, who is a phenomenal player for Notre Dame, second round pick, Buckus finalist, 2002, 2000, 2003 is a Buckus finalist. Yep. So Courtney was a three-star running back from Florida, like 190-pound running back. They move him over to defense. And Coach Kirk Dowell, who's a great coach, I'm telling you, Tim, every single practice, Coach Dowell had his arm around Courtney, and he got like one-on-one -on -one tutelage all spring because it was like he had so much ground to make up. And then the byproduct of that is he ends up being, you know, a second round pick and Courtney could fly. I mean, I'm not taking anything away from him, but to speed up that development, it takes time. So Max Bull, you're the new GA. Your job, mf -er, is to focus on those two kids. You know, these other starters, they're good. You focus on those two. And if those two kids hit and you really focused on them. It makes you look great. It makes you look great. And now you're, and you're linebacker. my next linebacker coach. I don't think there's anything. I don't think there's anything wrong with like just putting it out there, especially like at like a DJ Brown is a perfect example. You're a great serviceable, like your quality. You know, you're going to play special teams in the NFL, but part of your job and your responsibility, my ask of you as a coach, is to help develop these young kids. And I don't think there's anything uh, wrong with asking a JD Bertrand to do so. Same thing, different position. Yeah. It's it, it's a great point, but now Prince Collie, it's a year three. And it's like. But then the other thing, too, sorry to keep it out. Another, another thought, and I, I think I mentioned this during the message board. Last year, we rotated like three linebacker groups, three safety groups, three D line groups. And as the season went on, I kind of went to like one and a half, two. Yep. But stagger it. JD, dude, is a solid Mike. He's just small. So, JD, you play with Prince, you know, and Kaiser at will or whatever. Kaiser, you slide into Mike and then you play with. Um, with Snead. So you balance out the experience and the know-how. I don't think that that's like impossible to do in terms of you experience Mike, inexperience Will. And, you know, experience Will, inexperience Mike, whatever. 
Folks, please do hit the thumbs up on this video if you are just joining us here recently. Uh, it really helps what we're support, uh, help support what we're doing here at Blue and Gold and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content. We're posting, I, don't know, I think, like three videos, four videos a day sometimes. Like we are seriously churning out the content, so please do uh, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss anything. Uh, top YouTube channel cover Notre Dame football, in my opinion. I mean, the numbers even bear it out, but that's a different discussion for a different day. Okay, a comment here. I I, I saw this. I, it was 12.43 a.m. that I tweeted this out the morning of February 18th. So I think this was like Saturday past midnight. I saw this guy's comment on our YouTube video, okay. and I, I don't do this, but I had to just tweet it. I had I wanted to put it out in the Twitter sphere, get reaction, and oh, yeah, I got it. Um, so this is what Colin said. Colin, um, if you are watching this. Damn, you're putting Colin on blast. I, I, look, I mean, he's, he posted it on a, on a public forum. It's a YouTube yeah. comment. I mean, it's. He comments back. It's <laughs> there. Yeah. Colin, yeah. real quick. Yeah. Colin, DM Singer, and we'll get you on the pod. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right. So this is what Colin said. This was, I think this was on our show I don't know if it was the room. I'm going to match him right now, Mike, while you're right. reading this. There you go. Um, this was a YouTube comment, by the way, Mike. So this wasn't – I don't know if he's on Twitter. but oh, um, So Colin, Colin posted on our YouTube video. I don't remember which one. He said, this was the last straw, this being Ludwig. After 35 years of being a diehard fan and after at least 200K spent on Notre Dame, at Notre Dame, and donated to Notre Dame, I am done, in all caps. I won't spend another dollar or watch another game. They are not interested in winning. Swarbrick needs to go. End of story. My tweet was, I'll give it a week. Like, if it didn't, if it didn't, you know, if you didn't have this reaction after the Marshall game, but or the Stanford game, but it's the Ludwig. Andy Ludwig buyout thing, which, by the way, has, is disputed. I know Eugene in our YouTube comments says it's not. It's it's factual that it was all about the bio, but it really depends on who you want to talk to. So uh, while Goolsby does whatever Goolsby is doing right now, Tim, I'll yeah, find yeah, you. Yeah, find um, yeah I, I mean, the comments are either like, oh, I love the comments. Uh, I'll show you the door or heck yeah, he's absolutely right. And all of you are probably going to end up buying Peacock again for the season and watching some Notre Dame versus a Mac team or, or FCS, whoever they're playing on Peacock. So my reaction to this is this is a huge overreaction, but Tim, lifelong Notre Dame fan and Marine, Goolsby, Notre Dame alum, you guys tell me your thoughts on this. Like Singer, is singer. Potster. Potster, <laughs> of course, just looking for some good content naturally. I like Logan's comment here over. I'm, I'm really building this up. Logan says a lot of strong reactions for not getting an OC from Utah. People acting like Notre Dame missed out on Lincoln Riley. I, I think that's a good comment, Logan. Um, but yeah, Goolsby, let's go to you first. Is, is this an overreaction or is Notre Dame not spending? reportedly the money on Ludwig, just kind of a bigger picture of the problems with Notre Dame. I'm, it's hot potato. I'm giving it to Tim. I all right. Tim's got thoughts. Tim, Tim. Cause I, right. I know where Tim stands on it. So I was kind of hoping you took the other end and yeah, but the audience doesn't Mike. All right, go ahead, Tim. Yeah. I mean, the, it, it's over. I mean, we know it's at least in my opinion is it's overreaction. It was, it was, a, it was wildness is, Oh, I'm never going to watch Notre Dame a day in my life again. Okay. Then don't, then don't it would, if you're a good Catholic, go follow BC. Okay, there you go. Go do that. Whole thing's overreacting. My favorite, by the way, Mike, which I just went on there, you know, it, you know, you sent us that, that tweet. So I went and read all the comments earlier today. My favorite's over under, but Vegas lines, what, five and a half days, he'll be back. So we'll see if he's back. That was my favorite line. No, it's a, the entire thing was overreaction. So, but what I want to know is, you know, talking about money, Notre Dame and money. Goolsby mentioned this about 45 minutes ago. He mentioned the name Brian Kelly. Brian Kelly left. He had, you know, he talked about this list and things of that nature. Swarbrick says, oh, we're doing a bunch of this stuff. When do we learn about this? That's what I want to know. When, you know, when do we start learning some of these things about money, you know, 
advancements, staff, you know, that, I mean, what's the first thing Brian Kelly mentioned? He mentioned the, you know, the freaking nutrition. So when's Notre Dame going to get that thing built? Those are things I would like to know, you know, you know, as we start talking about money in Notre Dame and what's going to happen for the players, you know, what are they going to be getting out of this? But to me, complete overreaction, anyone who jumped on Twitter saying fire 72 p- people and blow the admin building up and people jumping on YouTube, going crazy, screaming. And I mean, there, there are so many videos. It is ridiculous. Like Notre Dame told Urban Meyer, you can't come. That's basically what it sounds like. So it, it's, it's ridiculous. So believe, you know, and the other thing is you're going to, you know, you just said it senior, you're going to believe what you want to believe. What narrative you want to fit. Notre Dame doesn't want to win, but I'm going to keep following them. Or Notre Dame is trying to win, and they scratch their head on this crazy, insane buyout that no one else in America has. So they took a pause to read read some lawyer language in a contract. And one thing, but it was the Pete Thamel, he used one word about the buyout, and it flipped everyone out. No one could believe a nearly 60-year-old coach wants to stay where he's born and raised. No one could believe that. So that's my two cents. So there's a lot, there's a lot to unpack there. So I do think that like the, the response to the news was obviously an overreaction. I think, you know, the, the whole narrative behind the, we won't pay the buyout. Um, I, there, there's obviously some truth to that, Tim, like what we were talking about earlier, like a 60K, a 40K, that's reasonable, a 2.8. I mean, at the end of the day, Notre Dame is a business and that would be bad business to pay $3 million to buy out an assistant coach. So, yes, you're going to support a coach to a degree. But, yeah, I do think you know, we know this, fellas. Like, you know, again, conflict creates content. People glom on the negativity. Sometimes those in the Notre Dame uh, – analysts YouTube world, like they come on so strong that people just glom onto it. It's like moth to a flame. And it's like, you got to calm down and think about it. Like Colin and Colin, not to put Colin on blast, but I mean, there's a million Collins out there that were overreacting to that news, but yes, it absolutely was messy and it was a little bit clunky. Um, but to your point, t- Tim, you keep trying to bring this up via text messages, like the facility thing with, Kelly and the nutrition, like a tra- team training table. So for those people watching at home, like as a Notre Dame athlete, football player included, there is no training table. There is no, I mean, there's a team dietitian that'll tell you what you should be eating or shouldn't be eating, but you go to the dining hall with the regular students. That'll never change them. Yeah, I know. That'll never change at Notre Dame because again, at Notre Dame, as a, as a, even if you're Brady Quinn, you're in, in the eyes of, the administration, Brady Quinn's just a regular student that happens to play football. That's the way they'll look at it. And whether they're lying to themselves, that's just the way they look at it. So that nutrition piece will never change. The facility thing, it's kind of tacky of like, where you when you go back to like how Freeman answered that and Fr- Freeman stood up at that press, press conference, fellas, and took all those bullets and said all the right things. To me, that's a man, that's a leader. Yes. Yep. So for Brian and Kelly to be like, well, they won't give me a facility. It's like, well, also, you're a fucking terrible recruiter. <laughs> right, Tim? So, yeah, both things can be true. Yes. So don't blame your lack of success on, oh, they won't give me what I want. It's like, okay, well, if you recruit, then maybe you'll get the facility, right? Yeah. You see where I'm going with that? What? I mean, I've said a thousand times. Like, it's just, it's like, it's like, it's like a bitch move to be like, well, I'm not getting the facility. I'm out of here. It's like, well, you also didn't recruit. Yeah. No, I, and he had, you know, you know, my, my wife said it best, you know, she's class of O2. She says, man, he was here for 12 years. He didn't win a title. Move on. So, but you no, know, I agree with, with the Kelly. Thing. I don't think that, I don't think the nutrition thing will ever change. And like I've said, I've said, so, it's nice to be able to mix in with the student body and be able to take a, take a breath of fresh air, you know, away from football. Um, and I think the facilities are on par. Oh, I do. Now I got to mark this podcast as explicit, but Hey, the people love it. Uh, the lead, yeah, you, yeah. You can pause that. You got the technology, but um, <laughs> so let, fun. I like it. Well, let me ask you, you, you know, going back to the overreaction. If Freeman recruits, if Freeman recruits and we make playoffs, et cetera, like this thing that we're like 
building, and we haven't even talked about 2023 versus 2024. Maybe it's another pod. Yeah, yeah that's another. Mike that's always kicks us out of here. Mike, leave and then come back to close it out. But um, <laughs> you know, Freeman, if Freeman, you know, if if you win, the facilities and all that will come. Yep. I, I, I want to believe that donors come, enrollments go up. It's just that's just the way the world works. Let me let me ask you a quick question on this overreaction. Do you think some of this is about Kelly and Reese going to the SEC? These guys, people want to win so bad to be able to go on Twitter, to go on YouTube, and and to just say, oh, we won in spite of you guys. Don't you think some of this is about Kelly leaving to the SEC? And then Kelly obviously wins another 10 games, wins the SEC West, beats Alabama at LSU. Reese goes to the devil, which is Alabama, right? He's going down south. Don't you think some of this overreaction is just guys wanting so badly for Notre Dame to win and just to shove it in Kelly and Reese's face now? So that hockey game, that, uh, I don't care what, what Freeman says, the hockey game, a huge mistake. Don't ever do it again because it just got the fans in an uproar. We have Andy Ludwig to replace Tommy Reese. This is awesome. And then that overreaction just went. Yeah, I, mean, oh. I think there's, I, I, there's probably validity to that, Tim. And I think I think there's validity to that, but I would challenge Notre Dame fans. What makes you a Notre Dame fan? You can go go be an Ohio State fan. It's a corrupt program. Go be an Ohio State fan. Like go 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 down to Texas. Like go be a Texas fan. Like you want to win. What makes you a Notre Dame fan? Yes, your 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 grandpa was probably a fan. The fandom gets passed down to your dad, and then he passed it down to you. That's just how fandom tends to work, especially in that Notre Dame world. But like. The reason that you're a Notre Dame fan, Tim, is because it's freaking different. Different. Like, I had to go to class. Oh, oh boy, dude, I almost failed out my freshman year. 1.78 GPA after a 17-year-old freshman, you know, traveling. Almost failed out, but, like, I graduated. Like, I got through Notre Dame. I did everything. I was in study hall for four years. Like, that's what makes Notre Dame special, and that's what you root for. And if you do end up winning one, it makes it, like, that much sweeter because we do things the right way. End of story. Well, I, um, hey, but, hey, when I'm wearing my Notre Dame hoodie and I'm in the grocery store. I, I get it like once a month. I got a ton of hoodies. And I always, oh, Notre Dame sucks. And I just always just say, yeah, but those guys go to class. So how do you not root for guys that go well, to I've class? Had, I've had that conversation like when I lived. Yeah, dude, that. I yeah. love to go to the bar and mix it up, dude. You know, college football Saturday, especially in my younger years. But it's like, you know, you'd have some, you know, Ohio State fans are the worst. Speaking of Ohio State. Ohio State, there's a guy in my gym that's got Ohio State tat, and it's like, I know you didn't go there, dude. Like, that's an Ohio State fan. Hey, Where's speaking of Ohio State, State, hold on. Did you hear the the news this week? The what is it? Uh, uh oh my God, the Fields, the quarterback for the Bears, talking Somebody about was like a fake tweet or something where he said he was. No, taking- he was on a podcast talking about he got what roughly three to four hundred thousand dollars. I saw the cash. headline. I saw the headline, and I've never heard the audio. I couldn't I get the you. audio to work. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Well, so. you go to you'd be you'd be mixing it up at the bar and be like, "What are you a fan of? You're a yeah. fan of exploitation, mutual exploitation. The kids trying to use an Ohio State to get to the league, and then the, the Ohio State sells them that dream, and then X percentage of them make it, and the rest of them walk out of there with no degree and like empty handed. It's like it's kind of gross, you know. Graduation rate of forty percent with a you know resort management degree or whatever. But I do think that there's some validity to what Colin's saying as a player. Um, and back like when I was there, I don't think the facilities like I told you that story where yeah. back in the day before they renovated the locker room, like the stadium locker, they ran a garden hose out of a shower head up through the ceiling tile and into like the Gatorade fountain machine. And we'd be like big time program. And it was so Bush League, you know, for a program like Notre Dame, you can't like tap a water line or anything like that. So there is an element to Goolsby. I'm saying sorry. Absolutely. I mean, the, I mean, you know, any comments we get where it's like, oh, Notre Dame needed a penny up here. Dozens upon dozens of comments, but just one where a guy who seems pretty smart, if he's really sounds like a a graduate, sounds like a graduate. If he's really spent $200,000 on Notre Dame, he's Colin's got a little cash. Man, this is the first guy we spent a whole 15 minutes on. So Colin, bravo to you, dude. But, but seriously, like, Where's our sponsorship? When I was 10 years old and I would get in a fight with my mom, I hate you, mom. I wish you weren't my mom. I'm I'm 10 years old. 
I don't, you know, I don't, I don't mean that. I, I love my mom, but for Colin to be like, Notre Dame didn't get Andy Ludwig, the Utah offensive coordinator. I'm packing my bags and I'm out. That's the thing, Goolsby. It's like, I'm not a Notre Dame fan anymore. I'd be like, man, bye. Bye. There's the door. Like over this. But some of that, some of that's, some of that's like, no, I'm with you, bro. But some of that's like societal and that's this social media bullshit makes everybody feel like their voice is important and whatever. Clearly, this guy got 15 minutes. Yeah. Time. So it's like, but I'm just saying, it's like, dude, Colin or Jack or Jeff or Karen or whoever, like nobody cares. You know what I'm saying? Get off Twitter. But I think that could be a good, like fun segment of like tweet of the week, you know, going into the season or something like that. You know? I totally, I've totally tossed around the idea of just doing a show where we just go through YouTube comments. They're the best. Sure. Just go through YouTube comments because they are hysterical. My favorite YouTube comment I've ever gotten was a guy saying, I hope this guy's watching right now or listening. He said, man, listening to that Mike Singer guy is like getting a root canal. <laughs> it's like it's worse than getting a root canal. I was like, damn, that hurts. But that's funny. Yeah, that's uh, hey, some good YouTube comments. 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 I love really? I love the comments. It's it's the best on YouTube after shows. I love going and chatting with everyone and seeing what's on there. And they I mean there I mean there's some dire people that watch all our shows and comment and love just talking Notre Dame. And then you get the the Goolsby, you know, the Buckeye guys. Whoa, you haven't won a title in so long. Okay, well, thanks for watching our show. I don't care. <laughs> you know, thanks for coming. You know, by. this is another this is another thing, and I I've never I don't know if it's been done, but all this recruiting material that goes out, Tim, to these kids, the flyers or whatever, I would love to know. Like if, if, if this is you know Notre Dame recruiting pitch, we're going to take the W2s of Notre Dame football athletes from 1980 on and let's take Ohio State, take a Texas, take a USC. I want to see what Notre Dame acts football players and you can bring throw in the Ohio State like, you know, first round picks or whatever. I would love to see that figure. You know, because like, like I said, Notre Dame represents more than football, represents just success. Obviously, football success is a big part of that overall success, kind of in refinement. But um, just don't lose sight. Notre Dame fans, if, if you get frustrated, don't lose sight of why you're a fan because we do things different. We do things the right way. And um, as long as we can recruit, brother, <laughs> the winning will come. That's what it, all it comes down to. And you know it, Tim. <laughs> it comes down to getting the kids. It's all it's all about the kids and um, getting the you know the right mix of, of coaches together and God. I mean, I mean, no, I mean we need to come back. I see we're over an hour. We need to come back because we've been Goolsby and I have been dying to talk about 23. And are are, are we sell is Notre Dame selling out for a rental quarterback? I want to get in this conversation. All right, let's we, we, we I don't know if I have it in me, Tim. I don't know if I have it in with me, Tim. Yeah, that's the thing. It's not that my wife's not even here. I can talk for another hour. It's it's more about I want a little bit, you know, we gotta save some good stuff for next week, Tim. We got a long off season, dude. Always. No, no, we have a long one and we've just been chatting. It's been like I'm proud, of you. I'm proud of you, Tim. Dude, Tim Kim, Tim Mike has come over to my kind of perspective, you know. On on the 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 uh, Sam Hartman, Tyler Buckner, 2023 rental quarterback. I've, I've developed that up. I think I might be able to sway Tim back my way. He's very easily swayed my Tim Hyde. I just got to give him a good analogy. Oh, but, hey, I like Hartman. I understand. I've always said I understand why he's there. I, he's a heck of a quarterback. He's a darn good football player. But what do you get out of it? That's what I want to know. I mean, seriously, I mean, what do you get out of it? If if all your quarterbacks are on the bench, running backs are returning, you're all all the wide res- so all the wide receivers are returning in 2024, but they didn't get to work with any of these quarterbacks. What do you I, it's um it's messy when you, when you what's more important, a year two or a year three with the exp- I'm I'm all into this expanded playoffs. What's more important? Going ten and two with Hartman, going to the Gator Bowl? Notre Dame thinks they can win a playoff game this year. A playoff game. They so they're going to go beat an that. SEC football team with – okay. With a 275-pound nose, Tim. I, I Yeah, that's what we're saying. And wide receivers are running by what SEC DBs? Uh, are those receivers got, changing next year? The same ones, a year older, right? I don't know, but they're all another year experience. Winning a playoff game means you're going to the championship game. 
That's that's how that works. Right. So the coaching, oh man, man, me and Goolsby got, we, you know, we, we got to prep some notes on this one. So the coaching staff feels this is a national championship football team in 2023. Go with Sam and, Hartman. With Sam Hartman. Go back and watch, go back and watch that. I, there was four points that I was kind of building my entire argument around. Yes. And I, to me, Tim, 2024 is much more so the year when all these players are primed and kind of peaking. So get Tyler the reps for 2023 to peak in 2024. And then everybody's like, everybody loves to assume that because if Tyler were to play quarterback for us next year, that we're going to lose four games, which is like, again, it's intellectually dishonest. Like you yes. can't say that. Um, and I think that that's where I'm at. All right. You know, cause then you're, then you're going to roll out whomever, if it's Tyler, if it's Minchie, it's whomever in 2024 with potentially two brand new tackles, you know, no, no experience, no feel for their wide receivers. Yeah, you know, don't cut off your nose and spite your face for 2023. Freeman's not losing his job, Tim. That was your big argument of playing for a yeah. partner in 2023. It was it was all job. We're just giving teasers. Let's Hold on, a quick teaser. Hold yeah, on, a quick I'm teaser. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Hey, Let's a keep... quick teaser. A quick teaser from Singer is oh, is, God. The, is his sources are saying they could win a playoff game. So that means they're. That means they're going minimal two and one versus the big three this year. Okay, let's also just say I would hope they I hope Notre Dame thinks they can win a playoff game. <laughs> I mean, if they're sitting here saying, Oh, oh I hear you. we suck. I, hear you. I mean, they believe in Sam Hartman. But that's one guy. Who's yeah, it's a pretty important position. True. Oh no, I, I agree. I have hey, the whole Hartman coming to Notre Dame, I understood it. When, when the news broke, I'm like when I said he was the starter and Goolsby got mad at me, I'm like, well, yeah, he is the starter. I was just being captain uh, obvious. There is no yeah. – they're not going to have a competition, so they're going to give it to him. Goolsby, what do you get from that? Goolsby, you want to come on next Wednesday? I'm down, dude. Yeah. yeah, let's talk Yeah, let's talk some 2023 football. All right. So, Tim, I need why, – Why can't Tim come on my Sunday night show? Because I don't like doing Sunday nights <laughs> as much as I like doing Wednesday nights. That's the question. That's the answer. That's the answer. Wednesday's easy. Wednesday's easy. It's yeah, Wednesday's my family. family. Yeah, um, who said I do though? How did I get stuck with those Sunday night shows? That that was all born out of that was your idea. Sunday's was your idea. Yeah, but that was in season, so I could in watch season. the game. Okay. Yeah, that's you true. Know, we watch the game back. Yeah, we can move to Mondays or yeah, whatever. nothing like doing by the way, post game shows 30 seconds oh, and singer like hurry up. And I've got like notes. I'm like, oh my god, what happened in the second? I don't movie? say hurry up, I don't rush you. I'm just like, hey, I'm ready when you guys – that's my thing is, hey, I'm ready when you guys are. I like this guy. He says, Ohio State's more winnable this year. Okay, so Ohio Tim, what I need you to do is because I always tell you, hey, Tim, sure. we're going to save this for next week. So you have to get my right notes, guy, because I can't stay on top. I can't remember all that. I got it right here, Mike. Goolsby, appreciate your time tonight. Great work. And we'll get you on next week because – yeah, we had still one more topic that we were going to get to tonight that we will not, which kind of ties into the, the 2023 yeah. or 2024 discussion a little bit. But, uh, yeah, ghouls be great work tonight, my friend. Hey, thank you. And um, just a thought. Okay. Let's get one of these on-screen timers, you know, so it's like, Tim, one minute. Clock starts now so we can yeah. see the top, you know, like almost like a, a presidential debate. That's how we need to do this. To keep That's moving. funny. Look can, I be Trump and, can I be Trump and just butt in all the time then? Okay, I think that's a good time to end the show. <laughs> all right, folks, really do appreciate everyone's time tonight. Please do hit it. that thumbs up. Um, subscribe to our YouTube channel um, for more Notre Dame football content. That was Tim Hyde and Mike Goolsby. I'm Mike Singer and tonight's show. Appreciate everyone watching or listening wherever you are. Um, yeah, head over to bloomandgold.com. That's your place for all Notre Dame football coverage. This has been uh, this week's Notre Dame football show. Appreciate you all, and we'll catch you next time.